Hi. So today was a crap day. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, I met with this doctor who is not a dietitian, but he does the dietary stuff for the surgery and I was just floored. I've had good experiences so far. I've only done a couple of tests. I mean, I met with this psychiatrist for the Psychoval part one, and he was so nice. He was really nice. Um, I have no problem saying his name. It was Dr. Fine, and he was a really nice guy, and he said I did really well, and that I was a good candidate for surgery for his perspective. And um, I have to meet with him again next week, but he said I was good to go. So I meet with this doctor today, and I'm sitting in the patient wait, not the waiting room, but the room to, you know, after the medical assistant, you know, takes my weight and my height and my blood pressure, um, and the key cat. And then he is just talking in the waiting area by reception to the receptionist for about 10, 15 minutes while I'm sitting in the room and I can hear his whole conversation, which doesn't have anything to do with work except for about two minutes of it. And it's like, it's just weird because you're right there and there, it's a very small office. You can hear everything that's, you know, and you just feel like you're being ignored. Not like saying, oh, okay, whatever, I'm not going to get into it, but he comes in. He asks me, do I know the morbidity rate for the surgery? And I say one in a million. I take a guess. I, I read statistics before, but I just can't remember off the top of my head because I'm not a fax machine, you know, a fax machine. I can tell you a lot of other things about the surgery, but not that. Um, he said, one in a million. You gotta be joking, right? It's one in a hundred. You should know your facts before you have surgery. I'm like, yeah, that's the point of me being here, idiot. Like, so right off the bat, that's how he treated me. Like, I didn't know anything about anything because I didn't know that one question. And I, I don't even know what the facts are for general surgery being under anesthesia in general like it has to be high an infection rate and everything like that I know the rest I've had surgery before with that but sorry she's making me all itchy with her fur um, and then he just goes on and I say I'm exercising and I'm trying to eat a high protein um, low carb diet with fruits and vegetables you know, like, more healthy foods, staying away from sweets. He's like, yeah, because that'd be a problem, you know, if you, if you had the room, why it wouldn't be so much as a problem, but this would be a problem, I'm like, with this gastric sleeve surgery. And even if you get the gastric sleeve surgery, you're probably going to have to have the room, why later. But they don't want to do it now because you're too high risk. I'm like, really, I'm high risk? I'm 32. I don't have any heart problems. I have sleep apnea, but managed and that just why don't I just go for the room why then why would I get the sleeve if it's not gonna work like that made me feel like shit and then he said oh well I said I'm exercising and he's like well, you shouldn't be exercising I'm like what do you mean I shouldn't be exercising I need to exercise to lose the weight and he's like no, because you're going to hurt yourself because you're too heavy. What? Like, aren't you supposed to say the opposite thing? Like, I need to be exercising, and this is what you're supposed to do? No, you're supposed to be eating 1,200 calories, and that's it. And, you know, I'm eating 1,400 now, so I don't know how much I can cut out. And, um, you know, I feel better when I work out. I feel like I'm going to be toner and that after the surgery I'll have a bit of mus muscle tone so my skin won't be as saggy and I do a lot of strength training, not just stuff. And after I told him that, he was like, oh, okay. Um, but he just talked over me. He blotted his skin and looked at it and it looked really oily and sweaty. It was gross. Like, couldn't you do that before you came in to see me? Um, just, like, inappropriate. Not making eye contact. 
talking down to me and, and telling me all these facts that I already knew about, you know, might have to have plastic surgery afterwards, it might be covered by insurance, I know that, I know that. Uh, I know people have a hard time, and he says, people come in here and they say, 15 pounds, I can't lose 15 pounds. Well, I'm not saying that. I've lost 12 already, and you want me to lose 30, I'll lose 30. My surgeon said 15 to 20, I'll lose 25 to 30, if that makes you feel better, and if it makes it safer for the surgery. I will do it. He says it makes it easier after you have the surgery to lose weight, but we don't know why. We don't know why. It's a mystery. Like, no, it's not. If you eat a good diet now, you're more likely to eat a good diet after the surgery because you know what to eat. And then he's like, you have to eat 2,000 calories after the surgery. Well, that's kind of hard when you're just taking in protein shakes and broth the first couple of weeks. So, I mean, after all that, yeah, maybe 2,000 calories a day, but it's eating the right 2,000 calories a day. So he didn't really tell me about that. But I'm supposed to meet up with a dietitian in two weeks, and I'm looking forward to her because I haven't heard anything bad about her. I've heard good things. And then I have to see him again in a month. I have to do blood work. And he keeps questioning me. Oh, your father didn't have heart surgery, but he had gastric bypass. Oh, you don't have gout? No, I don't have these things. I'm under the care. It's not like I haven't seen a doctor. I haven't seen specialists. I haven't, you know, I haven't had tests done. Like, I've been living under a rock and no one's ever seen me. I, he just made me so upset. So upset. And that he's the only choice. It's just... There's, like, straight shooters. I've, I've known, like, orthopedics to be like that. They just tell you how it is. And, but usually, like, they'll ask you questions. He asked me one question. I got it wrong, and that was it for him. That was it. And I really don't want to go back. But I guess I have to. I have no other choice. I can't have the surgery at another hospital, and I don't really want to. I love my surgeon. He's great, but I, with my insurance, I can't have it at another hospital. So, you know. And today was hard. We went to out to eat, and Manja, and uh, you know, there's all this pasta and desserts, and it's Italian food. But I got the salmon and asparagus, and I only had a little tiny bit of pasta from uh, my stepfather's plate. But I had like ho really horrible yogurt that was like 17 grams of sugar and I feel horrible about it. Even though I worked out last night and walked three miles today, according to my little Fitbit, I still feel like I failed in some way. But my uh, my sister said, which was a good point, that maybe he acts like such a jerk, which I don't think it's true, totally, because he's trying to weed out the people that aren't ready for the surgery. Well, I'm ready. You know, a lot of people say, you're doing so good, you can just keep going and lose the weight, and I don't think I can. I think 30 pounds, yeah, I can do that. I can do that easy. The rest would be just really hard without this extra tool to do it with, and I made my mind up, so there's really no going back. Unless they find some weird thing that's wrong with me, which I really doubt it. So, thank you for your support, though, then give it to me and I really appreciate it and um, if anybody has any really good ideas for healthy snacks I'm always willing to hear them because it gets kind of boring you know doing the same things over again but thank you